Hello, welcome back everybody. So today I'm gonna to be talking about what is better, a rollerblade or a ski road for ski training in summer. I get asked this question all the time on my rollerblading and ski road videos that I thought I should do a video about it. So here it is, let's get into it. First off, what I wanna say is if you have the funds, you should definitely get one of each because they are both excellent, excellent ski training tools and they kind of have different strengths and different weaknesses. So they kind of complement each other a lot in many, many aspects. So that's what I'd say first off, definitely get both if you can afford it. If not, then hopefully this little explanation of the differences might help you decide on which one you should choose. So let's go over the ski road first. The ski road, as you can see, is a rollerblade frame that connects to a ski boot and it's got five wheels but basically the strength of this is that you have a ski boot and as skiers we feel quite comfortable in ski boots it puts our leg and our foot in the same position as when we ski so it's quite easy to feel comfortable straight away the other thing is the cuff just like skiing it gives us a lot of leverage over the rollerblades and that's really really good for getting a type of rebound. It's not the same type of rebound as you get on skis, but because of the cuff and the stiffness and the rigidity of this, you get a similar type of rebound to skis that you don't quite get on the rollerblades. This, you get like a much harder pressure. You get, you can feel when you roll it right over, you get this type of little bit of a pushback from the, from the asphalt. And that's something I don't get as much on the rollerblades but that's a difference I feel. Obviously when we're skiing and we're practicing ski technique stuff, we want to kind of put our foot into a position that we have when we ski. So the, the most similar thing is definitely this because of the ski boot. But that doesn't mean that the rollerblade's bad. I'm going to explain a few key aspects about the, the rollerblade and why I'm actually using this more right now. And it has to do with the opposite thing. It doesn't have a cuff. It, you have a 360, movement with the ankle. You have a lot more pronation, and a lot more supination with the foot. And the one thing that I notice after a season of skiing is that my ankles get a little bit weaker, my feet get a little bit weaker. And in this ski road, I am using the same type of muscles as I do when I ski. So I don't use as much strength in my foot as I do with this. So that was one aspect what I wanted to try out was to try and figure out how this is for strengthening the foot, strengthening the ankle. And this is an excellent tool for strengthening your whole lower leg. All of these muscles around here, the ankle, the feet, it really does give you a good training and it's gonna make your legs work in a totally different way to the ski road. I really like the fact that I can increase my strength, increase my power through my, my feet and my ankles with this tool. Whereas I don't get as much of that through that. Obviously the legs are working, the glutes, the adductors, abductors, all of those things are the same on each, but it's more the ankle, the lower leg, all of these muscles here, ponius longus, tibialis anterior, calf muscle, all the fine little muscles in your feet, those all get worked out a lot. And because you have a lot more range of movement, then you can also strengthen your feet in different ranges. The other thing is in summer, we get quite hot. So having a, a lighter, smaller one is gonna be a lot less hot. So you're not gonna sweat as much. In the ski boot training in the summer, you can have sweat dripping down your legs. So you have to be a little bit prepared for that. The other thing is this is much lighter compared to, to this. And because you have the extra range, then this is a little bit more maneuverable. You can also take it in cities and you can just do a little bit of fitness with it. And that's the other aspect that I've been using this for is doing interval training on this. I feel like this is a really excellent tool for gaining strength and gain fitness through. Whereas this one is definitely just more focused towards ski technique training. Obviously it's quite heavy, so you could use it for training as well, but it's not as nimble and it's not as fun for doing, you know, hill sprints or, you know, anything like that. So this is definitely a tool if you wanted to get fitness. Fitness, this is an excellent tool for that and strengthening. I do get asked what model of ski road I use. I think that the Carbon Gold 5 
is the best model that they have and that's what I use and you can find it on their website which I'll link right here and I think that this one is the one that's the most similar to skiing. I really like this one. It's excellent short-term training. These both rollerblades and ski road I feel are very good for doing short-term training and like parallel basic training. Obviously you cannot do like carving turns on this. This is not like a you can't get your hip down to the to the asphalt and drag it along the ground. If you do they'll just slide out. So there is an edge angle limit that you can get with these that you'll need to be aware of and that's usually in like that kind of short swing radius type turn and I find that the movements are quite similar and I have a very similar type of timing with the ankles, knees and hip movement into the turn. So I think that this is an excellent tool and this is an excellent tool for short turn training. The model that I have with the rollerblade is a little bit different um, than you'll actually find in the shop because I've kind of got a hybrid here. I originally got the Twister XT but the upper cuff here had like a one of the buckles came on the inside and had a big bulge coming out the side so when I was changing my edges it would catch. I didn't like that it was quite unstable when I'd catch it, it would like flick my, my um, inside away or my outside away. So what I actually did was I got the Maxim XT cuff and I put it on the lower boot of the Twister. And I think that if I was going to recommend one, I'd go for the Maxim XT with the 90 mil. I think it's a really good boot and it has a nice smooth inside so you won't catch. The other thing is the 90 mil wheels I feel are quite fun because the 80 mil wheels, if you want to go downhill, they're a little bit squirrely. So 90 mil, you can go a little bit faster and you can have a little bit more uh, stability with these wheels. So I think that the 80 mil wheels are really fun as well. I have the frames for the 80 mil wheels and I use them for a very flat type of tic-tac stuff on the, on the flats and they're really fun for doing very um, slow moving but fast dynamic movements. There's, there's another difference between the two. Obviously, this one here, the ski road, for me, I feel like I can actually go down quite steep roads on this doing turns, and I have a lot more control in very steep terrain, and if it slides, I can get it back quite easy. I can do kind of like little tight type of skids in between turns, kind of like skiing, whereas this one, the rollerblade, I don't quite have as much control and that's probably because I'm just not good enough. I probably can get just as much control in that as well. But because I'm a skier, I'm used to having ski boots. So I feel quite comfortable giving it a little bit extra in a ski boot compared to a rollerblade. So I think that's up to me. But also, I think that's going to be quite similar for most skiers. So if you're a skier, which I'm assuming you are watching this video, then I think that if you, if you want to experiment with steep, steeper roads and stuff, I think you'll probably be, feel a little bit more comfortable on this one compared to the rollerblade. It's not to say you can't do it. I think that you can do it on both. I just think that as a ski, you're probably going to be more comfortable with a ski boot. That's all. Pump turns. I think pump turns are much better on these, like tic tacs and pump turns. You can do it on both, but the amount of power and push that you can get out of this because you have that extra leverage with your ankle opening and closing and side to side, you're going to go a lot faster with this if you're doing pr like pump turns or tic-tac turns. And for those who are interested in learning how to use these tools for your ski training during the summer, then on Projected Productions we have a video that goes over all the way from beginner to an expert taught by Stefano Bellingeri. He's a world champion inline alpine slalom and GS specialist. And he goes over a progression that teaches you how to use these and what to focus on and how to do it. And I think it's an excellent tool for those who are interested in progressing their skiing over the summer using these tools. So I'll put the link in the description on our Projected Productions website. You should check that out. Hopefully this answers all your questions. Um, if you have any more, please put them in the comments below. But these are the main differences I feel between the two. Like I said, if you have the funds, get one of each because they both have different strengths. The only thing that I wish I had done sooner was start this much earlier in life because I feel like this is one of the best training tools you can do for skiing over the summer. Anyway, until next time, see you later.